Just a few years back, saying that Intel is the go-to for budget setup is something that you wouldn't hear from almost everyone. But subsequently, with their 10th gen release, it seems that Intel has outdone their competition in terms of pricing in the entry-level market, but with a catch. So hello and welcome back again to Junkyard Summit and today we are taking a look at the Intel i3-10100F and moreover the i3-10105F which is technically the former with just a 100MHz increase in its core clock. For starters, the Intel i3-10100F is a 4-core 8-thread CPU with a base clock of 3.6GHz and a max single boost clock of 4.3GHz which is still based on the very mature 14nm process node. This also has 6MB of L3 cache with a TDP of 65 watts. And like always with Intel's naming scheme, this CPU doesn't have an integrated graphics due to having the F suffix while overclocking is also locked as it doesn't have the K suffix. The 10100F was released for almost a year already with an introductory price of 99 US dollars or around 5,500 Philippine peso and that is post tax. Though during around Q4 of 2020, we saw a price reduction in almost all of the 10 gen CPUs and you could get this for as low as 4,500 Philippine Peso and that is tax included. But now in 2021, it seems that getting the 10100F is kinda hard at the moment as the 10105F is already out and you could get that for as low as 5,000 Philippine Peso. For today's comparison, I'll be pitting the Intel i3-10100F with my Ryzen 3 3100 in some of synthetic benchmark and a couple of gaming benchmarks. Assuming we could get both CPUs at a normal price point, the 10100F should be around 1,000 Philippine Peso or $20 cheaper as compared to the 3100 which gives our Intel CPU a huge edge over our Ryzen CPU. Other components for today's testing are listed here right now and with that out of the way, let us check some of these benchmarks. With the results out, we could see that the Intel i3 trails a little bit behind as compared to the Ryzen 3 3100 but still within the negligible difference besides 7-zip benchmark. Not too sure why total score for the 3100 is high as compared to the 10100F and I'll try to compare the compression and decompression result instead next time. As for gaming benchmarks, just like in our CPU tests, the difference is negligible where in some games, the 10100F is ahead by a couple of FPS and vice versa. Compiling our 8 game average, we could see that the difference between the two is less than 1% and based from this result, we could conclude that the performance of these two CPUs are identical. Also given that the 10105F has an increased core clock, the margin between the two CPUs should be even smaller. In terms of power consumption, even though the i3-10100F is still on the older 14 nanometer process node, surprisingly we could see that these CPU still has a better power management in lower clocks and should save you a couple of bucks down the line. So based from the result and the analysis from before, one could assume that since these two CPUs performance are almost equal, the 10100F should be a better buy over the 3100. Normally, I would say that too, but there are two problems in going for this CPU. First is the motherboard offerings. For example, this Gigabyte motherboard that I am using costs me around 3,500 pesos, while for AM4 socket, the cheapest is around 2,700 pesos for a similarly spec Gigabyte, which should offset our CPU cost, making the price advantage of the 10100F somewhat irrelevant. For my second issue, it is the upgrade path. 
Though Intel 10th and 11th Gen series offers great CPUs, upgrading to an 8th or 10th core CPUs using this cheap motherboard is not a good idea. On the other hand, going for a cheap B450 motherboard such as the Gigabyte B450M S2H, which just cost around 300 pesos more than our H410M board, is going to offer overclocking, XMP, and could easily run an 8-core or even a 12-core Ryzen CPU at stock clocks. As for my personal take, the Intel i3-10100F and i3-10105F are great entry-level CPUs that are already miles ahead as compared to their previous i3 generations and at the same time can compete with the Ryzen 3 3100. Who could have thought that after all these years, we could now relate the word budget to an Intel CPU and I do think that this is a great move from Intel in order for them to stay competitive at this rate. So I think that is all for today's video. What are your thoughts on these newer Intel i3 budget CPUs? Go comment it down below and if you find this video helpful, go hit that like button and at the same time, do consider in subscribing to my channel for more CPU reviews like this one. Once again, this is Brain of Junkard Summit. Thank you, stay safe, and see you in the next one.